I've got one simple tip to help you pass your Nibosch NG2 or IG2 project on the first attempt. Actually, I've got loads of tips, loads of tips. Well, I'll just have to do loads of videos then. Anyway, here's the tip for today. The NG2 document, the template document, actually has bullet points in it, which tells you what you should write in every box. So here's my tip. Do what the bullet points say. Let's take a look at this one. So here we, we have, this is the Nibosch example NG2, by the way, it's nothing confidential. It says bullet point one, types of injury or ill health. So there's a clue. <laughs> Write down the types of injury or ill health. Why not? So here we've got in the sample, it says, well, the injuries could range from minor injuries, such as bruising. There we are. So we don't say minor injuries. Oh, they could be injured. Yeah, we know they could be injured. What's the type of injury? Oh, it could be a minor injury. That's not a type of injury. Well, they could be hurt. I know they could be hurt, but what is the type of injury? Oh, they could be bruised. Finally, finally, bruising. Brilliant. All right, so we've got bruising. We've got sprains. We've got strains. We've got fractures. We've got head or internal injuries. All right, all right. Okay, so we've got some nice tight ones. Well, they're not nice, are they? None of that was nice. I enjoyed it. But you know what I mean. We've got types of injuries. It also says number of workers at risk. Right, we've got six mechanics. Brilliant. Number six. Great stuff. How often the activity is carried out? Well, the inspection pit is in regular daily use. There you go, daily. That's how often. Regular daily use. Most mechanics carry out work in this area. Now, I had one guy email me. I won't show you the email, so I don't want to embarrass him. But he emailed me saying, oh, I didn't put that in there because I'd already mentioned that in my risk assessment previously. So he'd already mentioned it somewhere in this bit up here. Yeah, here's, here's the inspection pit. And I didn't want to repeat myself. And then I failed. And, and the examiner said that information was missing from the box and and what should i do it's so unfair do you think i should appeal it i'm like no don't appeal it just just do what the bullet points tell you which is put the information in the box where it's required like I mean, what do you expect thankfully the guy was not a student of mine he just just some random just some random who emails me off the internet yeah, he wants me to read his ng2 for him uh, use your own course provider hey sorry to butt in if you do want me to read your NG2 practical, or if you want me to check out why you failed on your NG1 exam, check out our Nibosch National General Certificate Rescue Package. Link right here. Check it out. Anyway, this whole NG2 document, uh, the whole, not the whole, the risk assessment doesn't have bullet points, but, the, but all of this stuff, it tells you what to put in. If we look at the back, you know, when you get to the review section down here, you know, it says planned review date slash period with reasoning. And it's in bold with reasoning. Like why, why that review date and not another? How the risk assessment findings will be communicated and, and in bold and capital letters. And don't forget this bit, who you need to tell. The first Nibosch NG2 template was rubbish. Didn't have any of this stuff. I mean, loads of people failed because they clearly didn't read the guidance document. So Nibosch, you know, all credit to them for, you know what, we could maybe tell people and make it a bit clearer. So they added all this into the template because they want you to pass. They want you to succeed. So there you are. You've got, you've got everything you need to succeed. You've got a tutor, you've got course materials, you've got guidance documents. Nibosch even put on their website, you should go find it on their website. They even put the training for examiners on NG2 on their website. There's the examiner guidance for NG2, and there's an e-learning module, which you can do. So you can even find out, you know, everything the examiner knows on how to market. You know, passing this should be an absolute doddle. Best of luck with your NG2 practical project. And if you make a hash of it, doesn't matter. You'll just pay some extra money and resubmit it with a correction. So whatever.